Why sanctions on China are a joke the real story. Discover the shocking truth behind the ineffectiveness of US sanctions on China. In this eye-opening investigation, we expose the loopholes, strategies, and countermeasures that China has employed to neutralize these economic punishments. Learn why sanctions have failed to deter China's rise and explore the unintended consequences of these punitive measures. Picture this, you're trying to ground your teenage kid. No more video games, no more hanging out with friends, you're taking away their phone, you think you've got them cornered right wrong, turns out they've been secretly mining Bitcoin in the basement. They're bartering chores for pizza with the neighbors and they're using carrier pigeons to communicate with their friends. Sanctions on China? It's kind of like that. Welcome, dear viewers, to this rollercoaster ride through the wacky world of international relations. We're diving deep into the belly of the beast, exploring why those much-touted sanctions on China are about as effective as a chocolate teapot and a heat wave. Buckle up, folks. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Welcome to Revo. Now your go-to channel for all things revolutionary. At Revo Now, we are passionate about exploring the innovations, breakthroughs, and game-changing ideas that are shaping the world today. Our mission is to bring you the latest and most impactful advancements in technology, science, culture, business, and beyond, all in one place. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos. Imagine the world as a giant village, right? A place where everyone knows everyone, and each person has a role to play. Everyone's got their thing. Bob's the baker, Susan runs the general store, and then there's Chen. Bob wakes up early to bake fresh bread, filling the air with the smell of warm loaves. Susan, on the other hand, keeps her store stocked with everything the villagers might need, from groceries to household items. Chen's the village tinkerer, a whiz kid with a knack for making just about anything. Need a gadget fixed? Chen's your guy. He's always tinkering away, creating new devices and fixing old ones. His workshop is a treasure trove of tools and inventions. Now, the village elders decide to punish Chen for playing pranks, no more trading with him. They think this will teach him a lesson, but they don't realize the full impact of their decision. But here's the catch. Everyone relies on Chen's gadgets. His inventions and repairs keep the village running smoothly. From the baker's oven to the shopkeeper's cash register, Chen's handiwork is everywhere. Bob needs his oven fixed. Susan's cash register is on the fritz. Without Chen, their businesses come to a standstill. The bread isn't baked and the store can't process sales. The villagers start to feel the pinch. You see where this is going? The entire village starts to suffer because of the elders' decision. Frustration and worry spread as people realize how much they depend on Chen. China, my friends, is a lot like Chen. Just as Chen is the go-to guy for gadgets in the village, China is the go-to country for manufacturing in the global economy. They're the factory of the world, the engine of global trade. Factories hum with activity, producing goods that are shipped worldwide. Cargo ships loaded with containers set sail, carrying everything from electronics to clothing. From smartphones to sneakers, from car parts to Christmas lights, China's got its fingers in every pie. Their products are integral to our daily lives, often without us even realizing it. So when you slap sanctions on them, you're not just punishing China, you're messing with the entire village's supply chain. The ripple effects are felt far and wide, disrupting the flow of goods and causing shortages. And trust me, nobody wants to see what happens when the global economy catches a cold. Stock markets tumble, businesses falter, and everyday people feel the strain. Medicines become scarce, and essential supplies run low. The interconnectedness of our world means that a problem in one place can quickly become a crisis everywhere. Remember those inflatable punching. Bag clowns. The ones that wobble and sway but never stay down. You know, the ones that just keep bouncing back no matter how hard you hit them. They seem almost indestructible, right? Well, China's economy is a bit like that. Instead of air, it's pumped up on trillions of dollars, a vast workforce, and a whole lot of economic resilience. It's a powerhouse that keeps rebounding no matter the obstacles. Sanctions try to squeeze China out, limit their access to markets and technology. These measures are designed to put pressure on the economy to slow down its growth and influence. But China's got a few tricks up its sleeve. 
It's not just sitting back and taking the hits. Instead, it's strategizing, adapting, and finding new ways to thrive. They've got a massive domestic market to fall back on with over a billion consumers ready to buy and support local businesses. This internal market is a significant buffer against external pressures. Additionally, China has been expanding its network of trading partners. Countries across Asia, Africa and Latin America are eager to do business, often ignoring the sanctions imposed by Western nations. And let's not forget their knack for innovation. Chinese companies are investing heavily in research and development, pushing the boundaries of technology and science. Like a dragon hoarding its gold, China's been quietly building up its own tech prowess. By developing homegrown technologies, they're lessening their dependence on the West and creating a more self-sufficient economy. Education and talent development are also key. With a focus on STEM education and a culture that encourages entrepreneurship, China is nurturing the next generation of innovators and leaders. Through initiatives like the Belt and Road, China is not only expanding its economic reach but also building infrastructure and fostering goodwill in partner countries. This global strategy helps to secure new markets and resources. So, while sanctions may pose challenges, China's multifaceted approach ensures it remains resilient. It's a nation that, much like those inflatable clowns, just keeps bouncing back. Let's play a little game, shall we? Grab your phone, any phone. Now, try to find one. Just one that wasn't made in China or doesn't have at least one component sourced from there. Tough, right? That's because China isn't just a country, it's a vital organ in the global economic body. Sanctions try to draw a line in the sand to isolate China. But the reality is messier, more interconnected. China's woven into the fabric of global trade, its threads running through every industry imaginable. Trying to disentangle them is like trying to unbake a cake messy, complicated and ultimately futile. Alternative avenues, bypassing the sanctions roadblock in today's interconnected world, sanctions can be a significant hurdle, much like a roadblock on a busy highway. They are designed to halt progress, disrupt normal operations, and create a bottleneck in the flow of goods, services, and finances. Sanctions are like a roadblock on a highway. They stand tall and firm, signaling a stop to the usual flow of traffic. But just as drivers on a highway find ways to navigate around these obstacles, so too do nations and businesses. Sure, they might slow some traffic, maybe even cause a bit of a jam. The initial impact can be significant, causing delays and frustration. However, the human spirit is resilient and resourceful. But guess what? Determined drivers will find a way around, taking detours, cutting through back roads, maybe even hopping on a dirt bike to get to their destination. It's all about finding alternative routes and being creative in the face of adversity. China, my friends, is a master of finding detours. With its vast network of highways and bustling market streets, the country has developed multiple routes to ensure that its economic engine keeps running smoothly. They've got alternative payment systems to bypass the dollar, such as their own digital currency and mobile payment platforms. These systems allow them to continue trading and conducting business without relying on traditional financial networks that might be restricted by sanctions. New trade routes like the Belt and Road Initiative have opened up a plethora of opportunities. This ambitious project connects China with numerous countries across Asia, Europe and Africa, creating new pathways for trade and investment and a knack for forging partnerships with countries who see sanctions as nothing more than a pesky speed bump. These alliances are built on mutual benefit and a shared vision of economic growth and development. You can try to box them in, but China's got a knack for thinking outside the box, or should we say outside the sanctions zone. Their innovative solutions and strategic thinking enable them to navigate around obstacles and continue their upward trajectory. So while sanctions may pose a challenge, they are far from insurmountable. With creativity, determination and strategic alliances, China continues to find ways to bypass these roadblocks and keep moving forward. The journey might be more complex, but the destination remains within reach. The boomerang effect unintended consequences of sanctions remember that time you tried to get back at your sibling by hiding the TV remote, only to realize your favorite show was on that night. Sanctions can be a bit like that, a knee-jerk reaction that ends up hurting you more than the intended target. Take supply chains, for example. 
sanctioning China disrupts the flow of goods leading to shortages, price hikes, and a whole lot of economic headaches. Not just for China, but for the entire world, it's like playing Jenga with the global economy. Pull the wrong block and the whole thing comes crashing down. The case for engagement beyond punitive measures? Let's be honest, folks. Sanctions are the international relations equivalent of a toddler's temper tantrum. They're loud, disruptive, and rarely achieve the desired outcome. Instead of resorting to these blunt instruments, maybe it's time for a more mature approach engagement. Think of it like this. You don't resolve a disagreement with your roommate by refusing to speak to them, right? You sit down, you talk, you find common ground. Engaging with China doesn't mean ignoring their flaws or giving them a free pass. It means having those tough conversations, finding areas of cooperation, and working towards a more stable and prosperous future for everyone. Addressing the skeptics, can sanctions ever be effective? Now, I know what you're thinking. Revo, now, are you saying sanctions are completely useless? Look, I'm not saying they're as pointless as a screen door on a submarine, but they're certainly not the magical solution some folks make them out to be. Sanctions can be effective in very specific circumstances, like targeting individuals or small entities involved in truly egregious activities. But when it comes to a global powerhouse like China, a country deeply embedded in the global economy, they're about as effective as a fly swatter against a charging rhinoceros. The real cost of sanctions, a look beyond the balance sheets we often fixate on the economic costs of sanctions. The lost trade, the market volatility, the impact on GDP. But the true cost runs much deeper. Sanctions breed mistrust, fuel resentment, and can inadvertently harm the very people they're meant to help. Imagine being a Chinese student who can't pursue their dream of studying abroad because of sanctions, or a small business owner forced to close shop because of disrupted supply chains. These are the human faces of sanctions, the stories often lost in the geopolitical chess game, rethinking our approach. Towards a more nuanced strategy, so if sanctions are a joke, what's the punchline? Well, folks, the punchline is that we need a new joke, a new approach that goes beyond simplistic solutions and embraces complexity. We need to engage with China, not just through the lens of competition, but through the lens of cooperation. We need to find common ground on issues like climate change, global health, and economic development. It's time to ditch the outdated playbook of sanctions and embrace a more nuanced strategy, one that recognizes the interconnectedness of our world and the need for collaborative solutions. Conclusion. A call for dialogue and debate well, folks. There you have it. A whirlwind tour through the wild world of sanctions on China. It's a complex issue with no easy answers, but one thing's for sure. We need to start having more honest and nuanced conversations about it. So let's hear it, folks. What are your thoughts on sanctions? Are they a necessary evil or a blunt instrument in dire need of an upgrade? Hit me with your comments, your hot takes, your fiery rebuttals. Let's get this conversation started. Subscribe to Revo now and join our vibrant community of forward thinkers, change makers, and revolutionaries.